Giant scorpions. Ah, who would have thought it? Well, of course, guys, this is LBQ, and we love nothing more than hypothetically prodding giant creatures of the ancient world with a hefty stick, because, well, as we've said many times before, science. Right? The thing is though, whilst we've often focused on giant snakes and leviathan like squids that roam the oceans and tropical places of the world, this one in particular is a little bit of a curveball when we imagine the hypotheticals of geography, of all things. And believe me, life for a certain little country would definitely be a lot different if the giant Pulmonoscorpius was still knocking around today, but we'll get on to that. Hello Internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. As per usual, I'll be your dismodded floating boys, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously asked the prehistoric question, what if the Pulmonoscorpius didn't go extinct? Roll the clip. For the Curious Amongst You, that particular giant scorpion of a scene was from 2010's Clash of the Titans, starring Sam Worthington as the demigod Perseus as he makes his way through a whole host of mythological monstrosities whilst trying to get over a few daddy issues of his own. And you know what? That movie was actually pretty decent. And when all you want is a potent dose of giant scorpions bursting from the ground, well, it is exactly as it says on the tin. Or the carapace, I guess. But whatever, the point is if you're expecting that kind of hypothetical giant scorpion in this video, unfortunately you may have to scale down your expectations quite a bit. Uh, yeah, perhaps we should explain. The Pulmonoscorpius, which literally means breathing scorpion, was a giant scorpion that lived in the Visean Epoch of the Carboniferous Era, roughly around 338 million years ago, which is a really, really long time. Back then, which was part of a geological era known as the Paleozoic, the oxygen on Earth was so abundant that pretty much anything and everything was on a massive scale. Trees were twice the size, leaves would flap in the wind like the sails of a boat, and pretty much every reptile and amphibian that you could think of were generally huge and terrifying. The Pulmonoscorpius, of course, was no exception, and it is thought that the otherwise insignificant style of arthropod could have grown up to a staggering 70 centimeters in size. And guys, we're talking about an arachnid here. Put it this way, the largest scorpion on Earth is the Emperor Scorpion, a creature that has existed for tens of thousands of years, and that is only 28 centimeters. Yeah, like I said guys, everything was just bigger back then. Other than that though, the superficial morphology of the Pulmonoscorpius is pretty much just a larger version of today's scorpion, although the one differing significance were its proportionally larger eyes, which have led to the suggestion that it may have been a more visually oriented hunter. As in, yeah, there is a suggestion that the Pulmonoscorpius was the active kind of predator roaming the prehistoric plains on the hunt for its oxygen engorged prey. And talking of prehistoric predatory methods, of course, we have to talk about the one thing that is sacrosanct with scorpions, venom. Now, it is almost impossible to truly know how toxic the venom of the Pulmonoscorpius would have been, but we do know that a good rule of thumb with scorpions is that the smaller the pincers are in relation to the thickness of its tail, the more potent the venom is, with generally thicker tails holding larger amounts, and of course, you guessed it, the Pulmonoscorpius had a pretty damn huge tail, employing it on its hunt as it feasted for large arthropods, small amphibians, and early proto-reptiles throughout its prehistoric native landscape. And this is where our hypothetical question may take a little bit of an unexpected turn, because when we talk about the prehistoric native landscape of the Pulmonoscorpius, there is only one place that evidence of them has ever been found. And surprisingly enough, that place is West Lothian in Scotland, even more specifically a quarry in East Kirkton, an area of the beautiful Scottish landscape that is known for its exciting preservation of Carboniferous fossils. And well, it kind of goes without saying, but scorpions, never mind giant scorpions, have never exactly been a staple of the rugged Scottish countryside. But in this hypothetical scenario, not only are they a staple, but they also never went extinct. Let's take a brief look at the human history of Scotland and the British Isles, because let's face it, this hypothetical scenario is a little bit boring unless we add humans to the equation. Now, it's thought that the first post-glacial groups of hunter-gatherers arrived in Scotland roughly around 12,800 years ago. Here, for around 10,000 years, countless tribes of the Caledonians, the Pictish Kingdom, and other Celtic nations lived in relative harmony, albeit constantly warring and skirmishing for landmass, but hey, that's just ancient history, and it kind of goes without saying. Here, instead of just the usual flora and fauna that they would have certainly had to combat with, such as the wolf and the bear, the pulmonoscorpion 
Orpheus would have definitely been a pretty potent enemy, and yet the Celtic people of Scotland would have had to have tread pretty carefully to survive. But we're forgetting the fact that we humans are a pretty resourceful species, and anything that would have existed in the wild would have undoubtedly eventually been harvested as a resource. Do you see where I'm going with this? The Pulmono Scorpius harnessed an incredibly potent poisonous venom, but when we apply that fact to human civilization, poison and arrow go together hand in hand just as much as poison and spear do. In all likelihood, if the Pulmono Scorpius never went extinct, at some point in history where human civilization began to form societies and then later develop their own arts of war and military technologies, the Pulmono Scorpius would have played an integral role. Just imagine what that alternate timeline would have looked like. Imagine when the Roman Empire first landed on the shores of Albion, and then when they later pressed forward into Caledonia in the summer of 84 AD at the Battle of Mons Gropius. Instead of being faced down with a Caledonian army with relatively poor weaponry, they had an army of archers with Pulmono Scorpius tipped arrows, and then a forward vanguard of spearmen with the same venomous weaponry. Yeah, I'm not necessarily saying it would have certainly routed the Roman legion, but hey, I'm definitely saying that it would have definitely had an impact. The very course of history could have changed at that point as the Caledonians and then later the Pictish tribes employed a campaign of venom-based warfare across the British Isles. Imagine if Boudicca's Iceni army weren't defeated somewhere on Watling Street but instead devastated the Roman Empire with their newfound military might. It would have sent echoes around the world. Nero would have had to have retreated from Britain and then who knows what the later implications would have been then. And all of that because a 78 centimeter the scorpion never went extinct. <sighs> wow. Now that's a hypothetical. Well, there we have it, our long and short answer to the question, what if the Pulmono Scorpius didn't go extinct? Then the Roman Empire would have probably fell to ruin. Wow, we weren't exactly expecting that one, were we? Well, what do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? How many interesting insights of your own? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any suggestions for future videos, and we'll see what we can do. Before we depart from today's video though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Al says, can voices in the void feel emotions, or are they alone forever waiting for something great to happen? <sighs> Sheesh, you sure know how to pick them out. Um, yeah, the answer is both. And it's a constant emotional stream of pure disappointment. Thanks for reminding me, Al. And finally, Isaiah Robinson says, what if video games were so cheap, like around five to ten dollars? Yeah, sign me up, buddy. That sounds great. Or you could just get steam and wait for the sales like the rest of us, but yeah, I like your optimism. Well, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers, stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy.